Super excited to be back with you tonight for episode number four of our Unworthy Devotion series here at the Refinery. This is our last episode in this series before we begin next week with our new series, and we're super excited about revealing that to you over the weekend, so stay tuned um, for more on that. But really quickly, before we dive into episode number four, let's rehash the three episodes prior to this one. So in episode number one, we simply talked about how as human beings we wrestle with feelings of unworthiness and our own insecurities often on a daily basis. Episode number two, we talked simply about uh, what are the root causes of those feelings that we typically have. And then episode number three, we talked about launching a counterattack against our own feelings of unworthiness and our own insecurities. And tonight, I really want to talk to you about how do we stay determined even when we feel like our insecurities and our feelings of unworthiness are winning. Because if you're anything like me, you have days where you feel like you're losing the battle, right? I know there's that old adage out there, you may lose the battle, but um, you can win the war. But I don't like to lose battles. I know that it's a realistic part of life that we're going to have days where we're going to struggle, but it doesn't mean that we should be okay with the struggle. Because the point in the matter is that we can always do better. Right, And and I I love what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 13. That's where we're going to start tonight. Matthew 13, 22, because he tells us that on the days that we struggle, especially on the days that we struggle spiritually, right, um, that there there may be something going on that is a a, a cause of that particular struggle. And, And listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 13, 22. You know, this is the parable of the sower, and it's specific to the conditions of our heart. But I love what he says. Matthew 13, 22. Got my handy dandy Bible app here on my phone. I love it. Uh, as you can see, we're reading from the red letters today, which means Jesus' word. So I'm super excited anytime that I get to look specifically at the words of Jesus Christ and, and realize once again, as I told you last time, that he literally breathed out those words um, and spoke them from his own mouth. So Matthew 13, 22. Jesus, our Savior, said this. He said, As for what was sown among thorns... This is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. So he's saying that there are some of us in in our lives where the soil of our heart has caused us to ascribe to unproductive behavior and has actually caused the word of God to be choked out and to be unproductive. Now, specifically in this particular passage, he lays out all different types of soil, and he's talking about how people receive the Word of God and how there's many people that whose hearts are in different places or different positions as they're receiving the Word of God as it is preached from the pulpit or from the mouth of a, a pastor in a community or from a friend or however it is that God has given them that, that opportunity. But I want you to also understand that on a daily basis when we look at our lives, right, there, there's a good chance that the soil of our heart may not be right for that particular day, right? If you believe um, that your heart can never grow uh, hardened over time, that, then uh, you're believing a fallacy because the, the thing about life is that life can cause our heart to grow hard and there are some days where we harden our heart more than others and there are some days where our heart is softer than others. And there are some days where we're so inside of our mind that we're not even thinking about our heart, right? There's an 18-inch gap between our brain and our our heart, roughly. And some days we're living um, in that 18-inch gap or we're living in our brain more than we're living in our heart. And so when we begin to struggle and we begin to look at why we struggle, we need to understand that it's perhaps related to the fact that we are uh, partaking in things that are unproductive for the fight. And so think about it in this military analogy, right? I talked about launching the counterattack with the Word of God, right? The Word of God is our tool. Now imagine putting, filling your tool belt with unproductive things, right? If any soldier who's ever gone to battle understands that he has a, a, a set um, OCIE kit, um, things that were centrally issued to him or her, that they are to take with them um, as they prepare to deploy or they prepare to go into battle and they can't really take any more and they don't want to take any less because if they take less, they'll be missing some essential things and if they take more, they'll be weighed down 
and be so having less than what you need is unproductive and having more than what you need can be unproductive and so I want you to understand that perhaps sometimes you're struggling with your insecurities and you're struggling with feelings of unworthiness because you're doing things that are unproductive for the fight unproductive for the fight and Jesus tells us that unproductive things you know, caring about the world, caring about wealth, caring about vanity, those types of things can literally choke out the Word of God in our lives. And guys, I know this from firsthand experience. I have choked out the Word of God and did for a lot of the first couple years of my life. I stayed in the baby stages of my faith for a long time because uh, I just wasn't in the Word of God. I wasn't filling my um, tackle box or my toolbox or my belt with productive things that were going to help me progress in my faith. Now, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have days of struggle where even though you're doing the productive things um, that you're still not struggling. That's going to happen. But you're less likely to struggle with insecurities and unworthiness when you've, when you've turned uh, to Jesus Christ and you said, I'm going to fill my tool belt with things that are productive. And so maybe you're wondering, what is those things that you're talking about? What is it? What are productive things that God would ask us to ascribe to in our life? And I love, I'm glad you asked that question uh, because uh, right now I think of the book of 2 Peter. And I'm going to turn on my Bible app um, to 2 Peter because in 2 Peter we find out um, what are some things that are productive uh, as Christians that we need to live by. Um, and if you're lost, right, you hear me say the word Christian a lot. If, if you're lost, once again, I've said early on, we've got we've to begin that relationship with Jesus Christ then once we begin that, we can start um, that uphill battle, that faith battle, that faith journey, uh, and we can start the refining process. And if you're in the middle of the refining process, these are tools that you can put on your tool belt. And this is what uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 8 say. And I love this. You, you, I hope you guys love this too. It says, For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so all of those things jump out to me. And so maybe you're asking a question, well, what do those mean? I heard you say words like virtue, words like self-control, words like steadfastness, right? Well, virtue is just demonstrating behavior that shows that you have a moral standard. And specifically then, he's talking about virtuous behavior and that you're demonstrating behavior that establishes the biblical moral standard or shows that you have a biblical moral standard for your life, right? Self-control, right? That's pretty self-explanatory. The ability to control one's emotions, right? One's desires, one's expressions, and one's behavior. And then I love what he says about steadfastness being firmly fixed in place, immovable, not subject to change. Man, that's a tough one, right? Because if we're talking about our, our insecurities and our unworthiness in the fight, a lot of times we feel very immovable. We know what it, where we need to stand and, we need to, and how we need to be steadfastness or steadfast, but we're really movable. We're hardly fixed in a place. We're more like a reed swaying in the wind or some tall grass rather than that, that oak tree or that other solid hardwood that's planted in the ground and it's just unwavering. But Peter says, if we are to be productive in our fight and in our faith, we've got to ascribe to these particular behaviors. And I want you to understand that a lot of our struggles really are associated with unproductive behavior. They're behavior that are the opposite of the things that we should be doing to be progressing and drawing closer to the throne. And, and I'll just give you an example, right? Uh, some days y'all spend too much time on Facebook, right? Or too much time on YouTube. If you're spending too much time on YouTube, um, you know, just watching random videos, you're not getting anything productive from it. It's okay to go to YouTube and be productive. It's okay to go to Facebook and be productive. It's okay to use Instagram, Twitter, and be productive, right? But you gotta be productive. And if it's something that's unproductive, right, if you catch yourself uh, engaging inappropriate behavior, if you catch yourself spending too much time to where your, your head, neck, and back are hurting because you've just been sitting behind a computer too long, anything that's unproductive, it takes your mind, your body, 
in your heart out of the fight, you need to purge it, which means to get rid of it, right? Um, to push it out of your life. Because notice what King David says in Psalm 23, and I love this passage. And I heard another pastor sharing on Psalm 23, and it really inspired me um, in my own walk. He said this, uh, this is Psalm 23, and many of you know, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul, right? He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. All right, I'm gonna stop right there because I want you to make no mistake that God is with us in this journey, right? We're not doing this alone. This isn't about us learning to be stronger on our own. We are yoking up with Christ and we are learning to fight this battle um, and to give him, allow him to be the commander, but to take a, a role um, as a part of the company or the battalion um, of Christian people. And each one of us soldiers has a role and we each have our own fight. We have to fight daily for the betterment of the kingdom and for the betterment of the company and for the betterment of the battalion and for the betterment of the brigade and all the way up until we start talking about the larger family of God. So each of us has a role, right? And though God is the, uh, Jesus Christ is the commander um, and he's there with us always, we have a role in the fight and we are going to go through valley moments. But notice he says, um, yea, though I walk through the valley, walking is a productive behavior. He didn't say, I'm going to pitch a tent right here in the middle of this valley. Because if he would have done that, he would have never made it through the valley. He would have been stuck in his unproductiveness. He would have been stuck in the valley of unworthiness, the valley of insecurity, his whole life if he pitched a tent there. And some of you, that's what you're doing. You're pitching a tent in your unworthiness. You're having a low as me party right now in the middle of that tent where all you can think about is the fact that you're unworthy, but you're unwilling to do anything productive for the sake of fighting back. And so maybe you're there. I had a, a rough day today. Um, I, I, I spent too much time doing unproductive things. And I struggled a little bit to get started in this video. But I was reminded that it's never too late to be productive in the day, right? And it's never too late to decide that you want to pick up your cross and follow Christ and be productive with your life. If you want to get over your feelings of unworthiness, you want to get uh, past your, your insecurities, you have got to learn to fight. And if your fight is failing right now, you've got to learn that it's perhaps associated with the fact that you are doing unproductive things. You know, the Bible call, tells us that we want to move from the milk of the word to the meat of the word. And often the difference is ridding ourselves right? Or asking Christ to come alongside us and rid us of unproductive behaviors so that we can assume a productive position and move from the milk to the meat. I want all of you to be mature Christians, mature believers who are then in turn discipling others and sharing the word of God with others so they can become mature believers. Because if you plant one seed and one seed grows into a plant, right? And it continues to multiply. If each one of us was to lead one person to Christ and to disciple them. This, this kingdom of God, the family that we, that we call Christians, would grow exponentially, uh, far beyond anything that we could ever begin to fathom or imagine. But if we are to do that, if we are to be effective disciples and effective uh, followers of Jesus Christ, and, to, to, are we, and if we are to overcome our unworthiness and our insecurities, we have got to learn to be productive. And so I hope you found this episode meaningful um, and that you enjoyed your time with us today. If you can't tell, I'm a little bit tired today, so I'm, I'm sorry um, that you can sense the fatigue in my voice. But I really did enjoy uh, my time in the Word preparing um, to talk with you guys today. And, and I'm really excited about all of you that are out there liking our channels and following us. Uh, we're up to like 170 likes on Facebook. So thank you guys so much. We're doing this for you. I'm doing this for you. Uh, friends and family, uh, people all over the world that, I, that I'm friends with. I love you guys and, and I, I want to bring the gospel to you and I want to help you become more productive followers of Jesus Christ with your life. So follow us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash the refinery process. You can follow us on Instagram at, at the refinery process. 
Um, you can email us at the.refinery.process at gmail.com. All are great ways to follow along with us um, and to see the content that we're releasing weekly. So I'm excited uh, to share this with, video with you tonight. I look forward uh, to getting back into it this weekend and preparing for our next series. And I love you guys very much, and I hope that you have a great Thursday night. Bye-bye.